and then make sure their video is off. It'll help on the presentation um, so you can see more of it. And then um, what we'll do is um, if you have any questions, just go ahead and do a chat to everyone so that everyone else can see what your question is so we don't get repeats. And then as uh, letting everybody know that the session will be recorded. So if you miss something, you can go back and see it at a later time. Those will be distributed uh, in the next day or two. So uh, my name is Randy Blosser and I am the um, uh, CMC trip leader and I'm on the backpacking committee. Um, and so I got involved in the Colorado Trail Explorer app last summer as I tried it out on the trail and I really liked it. And so this year um, in the backpacking group for um, our trips this year that are the pre-planned trips, those were all routed and put together and planned out on uh, the app Colorado Trail Explorer. Um, I really like the app because well, for one, it's free <laughs> and it has really good uh, maps that have just the right amount of information for me. They're really high quality. And I think most important, what everybody will enjoy is that the information is continually updated by all the land managers here in Colorado. So you'll get the latest updates on trail closures, fire conditions, and all that. So there's a lot of advantages to using this app. And so we thought it'd be good to uh, have a little bit of a training session on it. And so that's what this is, is this is module two. If you missed last week, uh, module one was kind of an introduction and we'll go through that a little bit quick tonight, but just give you a quick overview and then get into more of the details on route planning and actually using the application in the field. So um, instead of me leading everyone astray and hopefully, and maybe even losing you out in the field, um, we enlisted support of actually the support team for Colorado uh, Trail Explorer, Cotrex. And so tonight um, presenting is going to be Joe O'Brien and he's with the Colorado Trail Explorer on the support team. And he is uh, with the Colorado Parks and Wildlife and is in the support team, like I said, and he is also a avid outdoor enthusiast, former firefighter, trail crew leader, and project manager and works with a lot of different groups in Colorado to get this application widely used. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Joe and let him show you how to use the program best. Thanks so much, Randy. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for taking time out of your Thursday evening to learn a little bit about Cotrex. Um, I think it's a wonderful application and hopefully this uh, hour is really valuable for you in uh, learning a little bit about the tool if you haven't used it before or learning something new if you have been using it for a little while. Um, so again, like Randy said, I, I love uh, fielding questions and uh, feedback and things like that about the application. Uh, so as I'm going through, use that chat feature. If it's something that I can answer on the fly, I will. Uh, but also make sure at the end of this to save a little bit of time if there are some specific questions that uh, we can't address as we're going through. Um, so I'm going to share my screen here. Um, so just really quickly, a little bit about me, Randy touched on it, a uh, little bit about my background and involvement with Cotrex. So I work as a product designer for Cotrex, which means that I build the um, features um, that that we launch in Cotrex. I you know, design the mock-ups and interview people and determine um, what are the best things that we could do with Cotrex moving forward. And then I you know, design how those things all fit together within the application. Um, and my background in that um, comes from working for um, a company that builds databases and fundraising software for nonprofits. I did that for the last three or four years um, in kind of a design and uh, project management and development role. Um, but before that, my roots are really uh, deeply woven into the outdoor space. I was a Weldon firefighter through AmeriCorps. Uh, I was a wilderness guide for, for a couple of years, um, leading backpacking and rock climbing and whitewater rafting trips, kayaking, things like that. Uh, and then I spent a number of years as a trail crew leader and a volunteer coordinator for trail building uh, organizations. So designing trail, building it on the ground, um, doing, 
you know, sometimes highly technical work in timber work or rock work. So um, I really, uh, trails are really my life and my passion and being able to, um, you know, support trails through a piece of technology like this is a really fun, uh, fun deal for me. So I'm excited to talk to you all about it here today um, and share a little bit about what I know about the application. So we're going to talk really briefly about what is Cotrex as an application, a little bit of the history and um, some of the really high level features. Um, we're going to touch on something we touched on last week, which is um, how Cotrex works with the CMC trip. So if you're taking a backpacking trip um, and you want to use Cotrex out in the field, um, I'll walk you through how to do that. We'll do that first uh, after we go through the overview. Uh, and then we'll spend the majority of our session here today on uh, planning your own trips. So how can you develop uh, a custom route and then um, save that, download it for offline use and use it when you're out in the field, share it with your friends, uh, do different things like that with it. And then some time at the end for uh, Q&A there. So Cotrex is the first trails app in the nation um, that includes all trail users and every official trail in the state. So no other state in the country has ever done anything like Cotrex before. Um, you know, we're on the phone pretty regularly with different states and agencies that want to replicate what we've done with Cotrex. Um, but it really is an innovative um, um, application and in that no state has ever done something like this. And uh, I think it, it really breaks the norm when it comes to how people think about government applications. I think a lot of times you think of um, an application that was developed by a government and you think, oh, I hope it's, you know, not really terrible. Uh, and Cotrex really breaks that. I think uh, when I found out about it as a member of the public before I started working with it, I was astonished to see how well designed it was and how useful it was um, coming out of Colorado Parks and Wildlife uh, and the state. So something to be really proud of in living here in Colorado. So Cotrex stands for Colorado Trail Explorer, as you see there. Um, so this app uh, hits all activity types. You can see them here on the right. Hiking, mountain biking, horseback riding, um, three different OHV types, as well as three different winter types and snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, and snowmobiling. Um, and that data is derived directly from official sources. So we have about 45,000 miles of official trail uh, in Cotrex. Uh, and the use types that you see here when you select hiking or mountain biking, you know that those are going to be um, uh, the use types that the agency that manages that land would like you to see. So unlike another application like All Trails or Gaia, where you might be able to download someone else's custom route or um, see something that a lot of people have recommended and then go do it, um, they don't necessarily validate and verify that that information is correct when it comes to um, the wishes of the management agencies, um, the park rangers uh, on the ground. So Cotrix is unique in that way and, and valuable for you if you um, you know, if you care about public lands and, and respecting those kinds of um, restrictions or reasons why certain activities are allowed on certain lands and not on others, um, you know, this is a good place to go for that kind of a resource. Um, it's 100% free, so uh, there's no ad, there are no ads in Cotrex. Um, there is no premium version. There is no pay for certain features kind of a setup. Um, it's free to the public. It's free to land management agencies who use Cotrex to post information. Um, it's free for everyone. It's a public service. It's funded by GoCo Lottery Funds um, and by CPW. And so um, the funding is taken care of on that end so that the public can use Cotrex as a totally free tool. Um, one of the things that people really love about Cotrex, it's offline map capable, which means that you can download um, blocks of the map uh, in Cotrex for free, um, save them to your account, and use them when you don't have cell service. So you can use Cotrex in the backcountry when you don't have cell service, uh, get a GPS pin on your location, and follow it um, as a navigation aid. Uh, and then finally, there's no account needed. Uh, so you can use Cotrex. You, you can go on the website right now or download the app and use about you know, 80% 80, 80 of the functionality without needing an account. The only time that you do need an account um, is when you get into um, recording your own trips. You know, If you're saving information, you need an account to be able to keep track of that. So recording trips, creating custom routes, um, you know, liking things uh, that you want to come back to and look at later. Those are situations where you need an account. Um, but again, that's totally free. And um, all we ask is an email address in case you need to change your password 
Um, so that's about it there. So like I mentioned before, there's a desktop and a mobile version. So you don't even need to download an app. Uh, you can go to trails.colorado.gov. Uh, you could do that right now and follow along as I'm uh, going through the presentation here today. Um, but it makes it really accessible and easy for people to, to use, even if you, you know, don't have a, um, a smartphone or tablet or something like that. But we do support, you know, tablet and smartphones as well. Um, so the maps are really high quality. We get a lot of praise for the 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 visual quality of the maps. Um, they're really, really high quality. Um, and they're updated regularly by official sources, like I said. The alignments of the trails were constantly correcting and updating. Um, the acceptable use types were continually adjusting as management agencies make changes to their um, their rules or their policies, or they build new trails and need to add them to code tracks. Um, and then a new feature that we launched last year with uh, um, with COVID was uh, closure and alert functionality, which I'll show um, I'll show this as we're going through creating a custom route. Um, but basically, these are advisories directly from land management agencies who have the ability to post in code tracks uh, closures related to health conditions, wildfires, um, construction. Um, any number of, you know, will, uh, wildlife um, that, that may need to close down a trail or, a, or an area for a little bit. Uh, land managers can go in and post that kind of information. You can see it real time so that you can make a correction if, you know, the area that you were planning on going to is no longer, um, you know, no longer available because of one of those reasons. Um, and then finally, another thing we added last year is the ability to see a weather forecast for the point specific area that you're looking at. Um, which we'll touch on really briefly here in uh, just a moment. And finally, a few more features that we'll touch on as well. A measure tool that's really valuable. I'll go into depth on that in a second. Um, featured routes, which are routes that are curated by agencies themselves. So park rangers and other staff, um, they could be anything from, uh, you know, an accessible hike that's, uh, you know, available by, uh, you know, wheelchair uh, to uh, an interpretive um, interpretive trip that goes through the history of an area um, to just a kind of hidden gem in a park that people don't frequent that often, but that has um, really high quality, um, you know, nature or, um, you know, outdoor experience related to it. Um, and then finally, these last three are related to, you have to have an account to use these, but creating a customer recording and liking and saving areas for later, like I mentioned. Um, so easy to find, search Cotrex on the Apple App Store or on the Google Play Store, or go to trails.colorado.gov uh, if you don't want to get the, the mobile app, uh, and you can use all those features on desktop there. So um, I'm going to jump into a live demonstration. The first thing that I'm going to do is just show you really briefly how Cotrex connects to CMC trips, and then I'm going to jump over and talk about some of those features that I mentioned, and uh, we'll go through the application itself. Um, so when um, you should get one of these if you're going on a backpacking trip um, uh, that has an itinerary a description. Um, and I'm sure Randy or somebody else could talk about this in more detail if people have questions about it. Um, but the point that we're going to be focusing on is this trails.colorado.gov link. Um, this is where um, you're going to find the Cotrex trip that's been created. Uh, for the particular trip. So we can see we have three different links because this trip is split up into three different days. We have day one, day two, day three, and our three different links, one for each day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this first link. I'm going to copy this link, uh, paste it into my browser, and open it up. And you can see immediately um, we're pulled into day one here, Five Pass Loop, Tour of the Horns Day One. It's posted by CMC here, the backpacking um, trips. And you can see the alignment um, on the map as well. The darker line here, as well as the arrows indicating the, the direction of travel that's intended for this particular hike. Um, so within this, there are a number of details about the trip that you can take a look at, the, the total link, the ascent. Uh, you can look at the overall elevation profile and hover over it. I'm gonna touch on a lot of these features here in a moment, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on them now, um, but this just gives you a sense of what you'll see immediately with a CMC trip and what you can kind of expect. So I have a couple of different options here. I can get here, um, which will open Google Maps and let me um, navigate directly to the trailhead if, you know, if this section of the trail has a trailhead, you know, so if you have day two and you're, you know, out in the wilderness, you're not going to be able to get there exactly uh, by vehicle. But uh, in most cases, 
uh, well, in all cases, in my personal experience, this get here, um, if you are trying to get to a trailhead that you've uh, clicked on or a trail in Codetrex, this is the most accurate way to do it that I have found anywhere out there. Um, if you have had the experience of searching on Google Maps, for example, of a park, and it gives you the geographic center of the park or some strange, you know, point that's off, you know, a quarter mile in the woods off of a road somewhere. Um, Cotrex does a really good job of giving you um, the exact coordinate of the trailhead and putting that into Google Maps so that um, when you press that on mobile or on your desktop, it's going to give you a really accurate, um, really accurate directions to that trailhead. Um, you can also download this as a GPX file. If you wanted to use this in another application, you don't have to use it in Cotrex. You can download it as a GPX file and use it in whatever application you like. Um, but what we're going to do here is we're going to like this. I'm going to hit like. Um, I need an account to do this. Um, so you will need an account if you're going to um, use Cotrex while you're um, on one of these trips and you want to download these and use the maps while you're offline outside of cell service. So I'm going to like. So I liked that. Um, and what that's going to do is that's going to save that to my liked list um, that I'm then going to be able to go in and look at on mobile. So I'm going to pull that up here on, on mobile to show you because that's all I really have to do um, to kind of save that trip and have it ready to go um, when I open the mobile device. So you may have um, someone asked them trying to find this hike and I'm having trouble bringing it up. You would need the specific link um, because this trip is unlisted. You can see that here unlisted. Um, this trip is not going to show up in the public view um, for people searching through Cotrex or looking for it that way. It's only going to be able to be visible to people who have the specific link, the URL here, that's shared in the uh, documentation for this particular trip. So you're only going to be able to see this trip through that link specifically. So um, you should be able to see my screen here, my mobile device. Um, I'm going to tap Cotrex and open it up. And this is always a good best practice with any app that you're using that stores offline information like this, a map like this, all trails is the same way. Um, it's always good if you're syncing things from a browser to your mobile device that you close out of the application and uh, uh, load the application again so that it can sync. It's just a general best practice. So what I'm going to do here is I've opened Cotrex. I'm going to tap on um, my profile, which is at the bottom left. Uh, it's this little person icon here in the bottom left next to the map icon. I'm going to tap on that. That opens up my profile. I'm going to sync this just to make sure. Anytime you feel like you've, if you've done something on des desktop uh, and then you open your mobile device, um, you always want to sync this. It'll do it automatically, but um, this helps make sure that you know everything comes through appropriately. And then I'm going to go down to my likes. I have other stuff related to my profile. I'll touch on some of these things here in a moment, but um, I'm going to go to likes. Okay, and there's my trip. So five pass uh, loop here. Here's day one. I also have day two saved, um, but I have day one here. So I can tap on this on mobile. And you can see I get the same uh, same stuff. I can pull this little card down and here's my, my map alignment. So it's the exact same trail alignment. I can pull this little card up and I can see that I've liked it. I can share it if I want to uh, with that share link. I can download the GPX here. I can see the seven day weather forecast for this area, the trail alignment, every other thing. So that's pretty good. Now, the last thing that I wanna do um, in ensuring that I'm gonna have this when I'm offline is to make sure that I have this check mark next to the offline uh, uh, button here, the offline symbol. If I don't have this check mark, it means that I don't have this route and I don't have the map that's underneath this route downloaded, which means that if I try to open up Cotrex while I'm outside of self-service, I'm not gonna be able to, to find it. I won't see it. So I already have this downloaded this map block downloaded but i'll show you um, what it looks like i'll delete this one so this is what it looks like if i didn't have that this is what you're going to see the first time you do this you're going to see that you've liked the route but you don't have it offline 
I'm going to tap on that offline button and I can choose to download the topo uh, or the satellite or both. I'm just going to do the topo personally. That's all I do to save space because I have an old phone. Uh, but you can, if you've got a newer phone, you could probably download the whole state and not worry about it. Um, so you can see that's downloading there in the background, 25 percent, 27. I can close that. That works asynchronously, just meaning that it will continue to download even if I do other stuff. If I browse out of here and go look at some other trail system, it's still downloading that map block in the background. So I don't have to worry about it. Um, but I can see that it's going up here 60 percent. Um, and when it gets done, um, it'll give that little green check mark to tell me that it has it. I can also look at downloads in the bottom right hand corner if I have any question of what map blocks I do have downloaded. So in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see that same download symbol. I'm going to tap on that. This is going to show me the blocks that I have downloaded. And I'm going to tap on that topo. So now you can see here's the state of Colorado and here are the, the grids. And you can see the map blocks that I have downloaded are all these ones that are in green. And I have one that needs to be updated here that's red. So I could, you know, tap on that one, delete, uh, and re-download that block. I can download blocks from here just by tapping on them. So I'm just tapping on these, and they'll turn yellow to indicate that they're in the in the process of downloading, but they're not done yet. This is always a good best practice as well. Anytime you do this where you have map blocks downloading like this, make sure that the trail that you're going to go on, the trail network that you're going to be in, is not right on the border of one of these maps. Because if you call an audible when you get out there for the weekend and say, you know what, I don't want to hike that loop. I'm going to go 20 miles down the road and hike some other loop. Well, you may drive out of your um you know, your map coverage and might not have an opportunity to download it. That's happened to me a couple of times. So now I always come in here and make sure and say, okay, well, you know, I know I'm going to be generally in this area. I'm just going to download the surrounding map blocks in case I change my mind when I get out there and, you know, I don't have cell coverage or Wi-Fi. Um, so that's pretty much all we have to do. Uh, the last thing that you can do here uh, before we move into um, creating custom routes and looking at some of the other features of Cotrex. The last thing that, that I will do here, if I'm planning on really relying on this map, um, you know, there are kind of two things to that. One, never rely on a single piece of technology to navigate and keep you safe um, because you can drop it in a lake or your battery can die or, you know, whatever the case is, an animal can take off with your, uh, your food bag with your phone in it. Um, and then you're in trouble. So, um, on, uh, so keep a paper map if you're going to be, you know, out for a number of days, of course, and a compass and know how to use it. That's always a, the reliable backup. Um, but if you're using this and you want to be very certain that you have these maps, you really want to use uh, Codetrex. Um, what I will do is after I've downloaded everything and I have everything linked, I will close out of the application. I'll just close out of Codetrex entirely like that. Um, and then I'll put myself in Wi-Fi mode. I'll put my, or I'm Wi-Fi mode. I'll put myself in airplane mode. And then I'll open Cotrex back up again. And then I'll check the downloaded map blocks. I'll check that I still have that trip that's liked and taken care of. Now I should, you saw I closed it while it was still loading. So I might have an issue here, but um, just to demonstrate, um, you'd be able to open this up. And this is what I can do uh, when I'm in the field. I can still go into my profile still go to my likes. I still have day one. Okay, so I'm in airplane mode and I still have this information and I still have the map and the alignment. So I'm all good. That's all I need to do. Um, I would do that for each day, um, you know, for each link for these trips, uh, but that's how you would be able to, you know, have all these trips on your mobile device and use it out in the field uh, using Cotrex. So I'm gonna pause for just a second here and um, see if there are any questions uh, specifically related to uh, to that piece before I move on to some of the other, um, you know, functionality in Cotrex and talk about how to create one. Um, Terry has a question about plotting routes from a specific point to another point. We might be able to use that as an example. Um, 
looks like the other questions. Um, Robbie asks, uh, what's the big orange exclamation point alert on the phone screen? Um, so that's when your location is off. Either you're, you don't have your location services on for Cotrex or for your phone, or those location services are really, really inaccurate. It'll give that exclamation point. And if you tap on it, it'll try to give you a prompt to, to resolve that issue. Um, and so that's, that's what that exclamation point is. Um, Robert asked about the how big the downloaded blocks are for offline use. I'm not sure. I'm not sure of the exact size of the offline blocks. I've never had any issue with store. I have a Samsung Galaxy S6. It's really old now, uh, as far as phones are concerned. Um, and I've never had any kind of storage issue, even having you know half the state downloaded. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how big the blocks are from a data perspective, though. Um, Larry was saying that he liked to trail on desktop, tried to sync it on mobile, um, you, and didn't see it. Um, so what I'd suggest, Larry, and I have to do this sometimes too, the syncing um, is usually pretty good, but every once in a while, something doesn't come through right away for whatever reason. Um, there are kind of two things, wait, and it will sync eventually, or two, close Cotrex on your phone, close it out of it so that it has to reload and then sync again and try to look at it again. Because uh, if you try to like something on desktop and then immediately jump over to your phone in the same minute, um, it might not show up even if you try to sync it because it's still kind of doing stuff in the background, um, you know, out there in the, out there in the interwebs. Um, okay, so I'm gonna jump into some of these uh, other features, talk about how we could plan our own route. So I'm going to use this area as a demonstration um, area just to give you a sense of a lot of the features and things that you can do um, just looking at the map here. Um, so first thing that we're going to take a look at, um, I, I'm looking for a new place to go for a hike. I haven't been to this area. This is kind of a, a use case here. I've never been to this area. Um, I want to know if I can go for a hike this weekend. Um, and you know, what's what's around in the area, whether or not the hike's gonna be fun for me and my family, uh, whether or not I can bring my dog, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, so the first thing that I'm gonna do anytime I come into Cotrex and I'm looking for a specific activity type is I'm gonna come up into this left-hand corner and I'm gonna choose the activity type that I'm interested in. By default, it shows any activity, which um, is gonna show you a lot of green trails because it's saying, hey, if anything is allowed, show this trail uh, in green, essentially. Um, so I'm gonna choose hiking here. And you can see the map didn't really change very much. The map stayed um, pretty much the same. But if I chose biking, let's say I wanted to come for a mountain biking, you can see this trail right here turned to orange. I'll switch that again. So hiking, it's green. Biking turns orange. So uh, what this orange is indicating is take a look at this trail. If you want to do this activity type on this trail, it's not outright not allowed. If it were outright not allowed, it would be gray like this. This is a gray, this trail's gray. This means mountain biking is not allowed on this trail. But this orange means, you know, you need to look at it a little bit more to know whether or not you can go mountain biking. Um, and so if I click on this trail, I can see this trail segment that was highlighted in orange. I can see details about this segment, and I can see it allows hiking, but it only allows bikes from uh, May 1st until November 1st. Uh, so I can't uh, ride bikes on this trail right now. This has a seasonal restriction uh, for mountain biking. Um, so anytime you see an orange symbol, you can see that with any type of activity, you'll see an orange uh, trail. That's what that means. It means there's something here that is restricting it. It is usually some kind of a seasonal restriction like that that's baked into the data that says, you know, every year from May to November, you can mountain bike, but otherwise um, you're not able to do it. Um, so anytime you see that, um, you know, click on that trail segment if you're curious about it to see what that restriction is and whether or not it applies to, to what you're going to do. Um, so that's the first thing. I'm going to go in and I'm going to make sure that for my activity type, the trail is going to be green. Um, the other thing that I'm going to look at as I'm uh, doing this are other closures or restrictions. This is where that closure tool comes in that I was talking about uh, that lane managers got access to last year. Um, and that's this kind of a situation. 
this has a, a closure, it's red on top of the trail. And if I click on this trail, I see this events and advisories pop up here in the left hand side. And so I can click on this and read more details about it. So now it's highlighted this whole closure instance, and it's telling me that this trail uh, is closed and there's a description of what's going on with this trail, why this trail is closed. Um, there's a photo uh, of the actual closure order in here. Uh, there's a link for more information if you wanna learn more about it. That's in most of our closures in here. You know, We have lots of different agencies that are in here posting and they have different kind of guidelines on how much detail they put into a closure like this. Um, but in general, you're gonna have some kind of a reason for the closure. Um, and usually a link uh, to learn more information uh, if you have a question about it. So I'm gonna look for those as well and say, okay, well, I, you know, I can't hike on this, so I'm not gonna be able to go on this. So I'm gonna look at this little trail system right here because maybe this is nice. We're gonna look at this as our kind of uh, area. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do before I think about whether or not I can hike um, this trail, whether or not physically I can hike it or if I want to, or anything like that um, is I'm going to click on the trail segment and I'm going to look at a couple of pieces of information here. Um, I'm going to look at the acceptable use types which I already knew hiking was allowed um, and I'm also going to look uh, if I ever have any questions about this trail in more detail that I want to get from an official agency there's always going to be this manager link for any trail segment you click on in Cotrex, it's gonna give you a link to that manager's website. So this is managed by the Clear, Clear Creek Ranger District. I can click on this. It's gonna open up the district and the area, generally the area where, I'm, where that trail is. We try to be geographically based in these links. But in a lot of cases, we have these secondary URLs as well, below that manager link that I can click on. And that'll take me to a specific trail page about this trail. So this is the Barber Fork Trailhead. And you can see this is the Barber Fork Trail. So this is giving me the, the link directly to the Forest Service page, which when I found out about this, I was overjoyed because I had spent years sifting through Forest Service web pages, trying to find cool places to go and figure out what was allowed and you know what the traffic was and stuff like that. And so in, in many cases in Cotrex, you're gonna find these specific uh, trail links um, across agency, Forest Service, um, every other type of agency, Colorado Springs, whatever. Um, we have a lot of those types of links directly to the trail page that has that official information and description and everything else, as well as contact information for the agency if you wanna call and ask a question. Um, so those are always really valuable. Those are especially valuable if I'm curious about um, some kind of an ongoing situation where I feel like, well, maybe there, this is closed because these are gonna be pretty accurate. These kinds of closures are gonna be pretty accurate, but we don't have 100% coverage in Cotrex yet. We just launched that feature last year. And so we don't have every single agency in the state contributing all of their real-time closure information to Cotrex. That's the end goal. That's the vision of where we're trying to go. Um, but if you have any question, let's say there was a wildfire, you know, a couple of weeks ago, or maybe there's an ongoing wildfire that's 20 miles away and you're concerned about, you know, the, the kind of status of the forest service or, or the trail system, you can always use those links um, to try to find more information. If you're saying, oh, I feel like this is probably open, but maybe not, it doesn't look close in Cotrex, but I'm really worried about it. Um, those are links you can go to, to, to try to figure some of those things out. So the other thing you can do is look at the seven day forecast. If I click on this, it's gonna take me to weather.gov. It's gonna give me uh, the forecast for the area. So this weekend would not be obviously a good weekend uh, to go out into the, into the mountains. Um, but you can see here on the map on this right hand side, um, you can see the area that it is pulling the weather forecast for. Um, so it's not pulling Idaho Springs. You know, I don't have to go and search for the nearest town. Uh, which can be inaccurate. If you have done any, you know, traveling around in the mountains, you know that the difference of a couple of thousand feet in elevation can can be all the difference in the world to the kind of experience that you have related to weather. So um, I find that when you search for, you know, I'm going to 
the Breckenridge area and I'm going to be backpacking and I'm going to be at 12,000, 13,000 feet, um, just looking at Breckenridge's weather forecast is not going to cut it. I need a more specific forecast. Um, and I think we all know that, you know, forecasts in the mountains are also, you know, equally unreliable just because the weather changes so frequently in the mountains and so quickly. Um, but at the very least, you can get that kind of specific forecast. So we can see, you know, our trail is right in this green box. So anytime you click on that weather forecast button within Cotrex, that's what it does. It pulls that over for that specific GPS coordinate. So you can take a look at the, the forecast. So just another good thing to, to know and look about. You can copy the coordinates. So I just clicked on this little copy icon down here in the bottom left, um, and I copied these uh, trail coordinates. You can also share trail coordinates on the mobile mobile app as well. So if you're out and you have cell service, um, you could you know copy the coordinates on your phone and share them uh, via text or email or whatever else with, with somebody else in your party to say, hey, this is exactly where I am, um, <clears throat> which can be a val pretty valuable feature depending on the situation. Excuse me. So. Um, so I've looked at this area, I've looked at some of the closures, I've looked at restrictions to see if there are any seasonal restrictions, wildlife closures, things like that, and everything looks good to me. I want to try to plan plan a little trip here. So I'm going to say that for this, um, I want to start, I've got a, you know, four-wheel drive vehicle, and I think I can make it up past this trailhead. Um, you know, I could check to see if Side by side, side by side is allowed here seasonally. So I couldn't do it this weekend, but I could come up here on an ATV up to this trail system. Um, I'm going to say that what I want to do is I want to hike. Um, I'm going to go back to hiking. And I want to hike this whole line uh, out to. Uh, the junction here with Devil's Canyon Spur Trail, and then back. So we'll just see how far that is. It might be a little too far for me, but let's just check it out. So um, I'm going to use the measure tool. This is a tool you'll use a lot in Cotrex. It's super handy. It's up in the top right-hand corner, um, just below the plus minus sign. I can click on that. It's going to bring up my cursor. It'll turn into a little uh, plus sign. And I'm just going to click at the beginning, and I'm just going to start clicking along the trail. So if you've used uh, Gaia or something like that, they have something similar. I can just wrap this to the trail, and it takes the actual trail alignment, the official trail alignment that um, uh, that is on the map, and uses that uh, to generate the distance. You can see my distance up here, three and three quarters miles. So that's not that far, actually. Um, that's not as far as I thought. So, um, but if I remove some of these, you can see it kind of it changes that measured distance as I go. So I'm going to go to the junction, and then I'm just going to go back. And I don't have to be right on with these uh, points. I can be a little bit off. If you get too far off, it's going to do an as the crow flies kind of situation in a straight line. Um, but if it's on a trail or a road, it'll wrap to that that trail or road. Um, so, and back to the beginning. Okay, 7.4 miles. Um, I can do that in a day. So I'll do that. Um, that is my route. The one last thing I want to check though is my elevation profile because I want to make sure this isn't 7.4 miles straight up. And it is a little intense here. Um, but I can see that uh, through this elevation profile on the left-hand side. And if I hover my cursor, um, here as I hover along, I can see um, a couple of different things. I can see my icon moving along on the actual trail alignment. You can kind of see that icon underneath the red line moving along. So I can kind of track, okay, when am I gonna when am I gonna hit this elevation? I'm gonna hit the climb right here, right after I cross Devil's Canyon there. Um, I'm gonna get to the other side of that and it's gonna be a slog up this hill. I can also see in the kind of bottom left hand corner there the grade of that specific point on the trail as well as the elevation and how far I've traveled from the beginning of my route. So I can see, you know, right here 
During this area, it's between an 8 and a 10 percent grade, maybe even less than that. Through this area, pretty casual, about 9,000 feet above sea level, and I've gone about a mile. But when I get to that 2.4 mile point, um, this grade becomes a lot steeper, 17, 36, 39, some really intense grades, grades here that I can see climbing up and out of this area to my, to my junction here. And at the very top, at my junction is 10,400 feet. So, so I'm going to climb from 9,000 to 10,400 feet uh, from 2.4 miles traveled to 3.6. So in about 1.2 miles, I'm going to go up about, uh, you know, 1,300 feet, which is a pretty, pretty decent climb. Um, and then, you know, go back down. So a couple of things about this elevation profile. Um, the green line above the black line here, it's pink when I'm hovering over it, that green line is an indication of tree cover. Um, that is not based off of somebody going out and counting all the trees in the forest or um, necessarily satellite, satellite imagery. Um, that's a calculation based off of the slope uh, and the elevation um, and other factors that um, Cotrex is basically giving you its best guess based off of those things on whether or not you would expect to find um, you know, overhead tree cover in that area. So that could be really valuable if you're looking at a, a hike that you're trying to go up to a 14 or a 13 or, um, and you're trying to, um, to plot that. Uh, you're trying to figure that out, that you might have an issue there. Uh, Randy said, lost audio. Can you all still hear me okay, or is it just Randy? Here you fine. Okay. Okay, Randy, it sounds like it's, it's just on your end. Um, so I guess you wouldn't know. That it's just on his because he can't hear me. But um, so this is really valuable for me in figuring out whether or not I want to do this. The other thing I can look at here on this elevation um, chart are the yellow areas indicate um, anything that's over, I think, a 15% grade and up to, I think, 30% maybe. And the darker orange um, is a uh, 30 percent plus grade in here so you can get a pretty quick sense of the kind of the sections where you're going to be you know having a hard time versus an easy time on this particular hike so just to recap we looked at the activity that we want to do we found out that it was allowed we looked at the trail page on the forest service webpage for this particular hike uh, we made sure there were no closures or issues going on in the area that might prevent us from being able to do this we measured out a route that's about the distance that we want to do for the day or the weekend and whatever the trip is um, and then we looked at the elevation profile to see if it's going to be within the bounds of um, what we want to do whether it's a mellow hike or a really intense one and this one's a little bit of a climb but it's not crazy it's not 3,000 4,000 feet climb or anything like that um, so we're going to go ahead with it um, and I'm going to save this route so that I can use it later um, I can do this as much as I want with this measure tool and just not save routes just go around and measure different things and look at elevation profiles uh, but if I want to save this as a route that I can pull up later or that I can share with my friends or family if I'm going out on a trip together um, I'm going to do that and hit this save route button choose the activity type so I'm going to choose hiking for this one. There we go. This looks like a familiar line, um, like the uh, uh, the CMC trip. It's the same same deal. I can get directions. Um, I can like this. I don't need to like it because I created it, but my friends could like it if they wanted to. Um, and I can download the GPX file. So I can create this route in Cotrex, download it as a GPX file, and upload it into you know, my Garmin or, or some other kind of application if I'm more comfortable with that. Um, I can see details about it. Here's that elevation profile in there, forecast, everything like that. So <clears throat> let's say that I want to um, share this with my friends. I'm going to go out with a couple of friends over the weekend and we're going to take a hike and I want to share this route with them and ask them if this is some, I do this all the time with my friends where I'll create something in Cotrex, send a text to everybody. What does this look like? Is this going to work for everybody? Do I need to you know pick a different spot and i'll build out a few like that so that i can share them as options for people um, so in order to do that i'm going to go to the bottom of the card here and i'm going to click edit route and it's going to bring up the route here and i can go and entitle it by default everything is untitled and just because it, it's saved for you internally but i'm going to title this and i'm going to say 
next weekend side, not this weekend. Um, so I'm going to title this. I can do other stuff. I can put a subtitle. Um, I can write a description of it, you know, me at the trailhead at 9 a.m. sharp whatever the case is, whatever I want to put in here. I could put a difficulty if I wanted to. Um, I can put tags in it if I want to put tags in it for my friends to take a look at. Uh, but this is the most important, besides titling your hike uh, or whatever your trip is, your mountain bike ride or your OHV ride, um, uh, the visibility is key to you being able to share this with other people. By default in Kotrex, everything is private. So nobody can see the custom routes that you create, they are only in your account and you're the only one that can look at them. But if I want to share it, I want to change this visibility to unlisted. So a little bit about these visibility types. Public means a member of the public could find uh, your route. Uh, they could search for it or they could, you know, pull it up on the map. Uh, private's only for you. Unlisted is uh, like a Google document or something where if I give you the link, you can access it, but otherwise nobody can find it. I can't go and search for somebody else's Google document. Um, they can send me a link and then I can open that link, but otherwise I'm not going to be able to find it. That's what unlisted is. So this is what you're primarily going to want to use. Um, only people tagged is something that I wouldn't recommend using um, unless you have a really core group of people that all use Cotrex and use this, but um, this basically applies to Cotrex's internal social um, kind of features where I can tag somebody in this hike. I could tag another Cotrex user in this hike. And then only people that I've tagged in that um, uh, for this particular hike would be able to see this one. Um, but unlisted, I think, works a lot better because people don't have to have Cotrex uh, to open it up. Uh, they'll just get um, a link that will take them to the web browser uh, and they'll still be able to look at it even if they don't have an account. So I'm going to skip tagging people. I could add photos if I want to. And then I'm going to go back up to the top and I'm going to hit Save Changes. OK, so now I have next week insight. And now all I would need to do um, to share this is just copy and paste this URL. If I copy and paste this URL, open up a new window here, um, and I paste it in, and it's going to pull open my route. Um, somebody asked if you can. Uh, if somebody else can modify your route if you've shared it with them? Uh, and the answer to that is no. Uh, you're the only one that can modify uh, your own route. Nobody else can modify that route uh, for you. Um, so you have sole ownership over it. Um, so this is what your friend would see if they got the link from you. They'd see this um, same deal on, on browser. They'd also be able, if they had Cotrex on their mobile device, um, it would open up Cotrex in the application and pull this up for them. Um, but any way you want to share it, um, people can find it and they don't have to have a Cotrex account or anything like that. So I've shared this, I've created this route, I've shared it with my friends. My friends say, yeah, let's do it. Um, now I want to do basically the same process that I did for the CMC trip, where I want to make sure that I have this route if I'm going to go uh, and hike it and I want to use Cotrex and record uh, while I'm offline outside of cell service. I'm going to do the same thing that I would do for a CMC trip. Uh, besides the fact that I don't need to like it because this is my route. Um, my friend might have to like it if they want to keep track of it, but um, I do not have to as the person who created it. So um, let me pull open my screen again here. So I can come in here. Oh, I'm still in airplane mode. I won't be able to find my trip if I'm in airplane mode. Um, so I'm going to come in here and it's syncing. Um, and I am going to come in. We'll see if this works with custom routes because I was in airplane mode. Sometimes it's finicky like uh, I forget who it was had the same problem and then did the same thing as me. Uh, and closing and reopening. But no, it's right there. Next weekend's hike, 7.4 miles, right at the top of the list. Can tap on that there. And here's the trip. Same as the CMC trip. There it is in Cotrex. Share it with friends. I can do get here. It'll take me uh, right to that point. Um, 
download the GPX, all the same kinds of things, weather forecast, etc. cetera. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I have the offline. I do have the offline map block downloaded, so I'm in good shape. I don't have to do anything for this one because I already had the underlying map block for this area downloaded, um, but I would always wanna come in and download that, make sure that was all set. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. Take Cotrix out in the field and use it whether you have cell coverage or not, and you'll be able to pull up the map and uh, look at all those details of the trip and record and do stuff like that. So um, that's what I'm going to show next. I'm going to show a couple of these features um, on mobile. And I know that we are um, nearing time. So I'm really quickly looking through some comments here. And uh, Randy or Danielle, I might ask you all to comb through some of these comments for me because I know we've gotten a lot in the as yeah, you're actually talking. you're actually doing a pretty good job keeping up with okay. them, Joe. Um, I think one thing that may be uh, asked that was indirectly on some of the previous ones is what you've shown is um, doing a route along an established trail, but can you use Cotrex to just uh, make a off trail bushwhack mm. plan as well? You. You could do that, but you wouldn't have, um, it wouldn't work quite as well. It's primarily, um, the, the tools are primarily designed to be used in conjunction with established trails and uh, that are on the ground um, versus, um, you know, orienteering and, and going off trail bushwhacking across a particular area. Personally, I haven't used it for that purpose. Um, so I'm not sure how that would work exactly. You could use the measure tool um, and get, uh, you know, as the crow flies, and you could just use a lot of points to try to, you know, right. a little bit yeah. more of a it, realistic you have path. To simulate the trail with the number of points using the measure tool. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if that would give you an elevation profile or not. I'm actually, that's actually a really good question that I'm surprised that I haven't come across so far. I'll, I'll tell you, it does. <laughs> it does. Oh, great. Yeah, I often use it. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I didn't know that. I, yeah, I've been needing to get into a little bit more off route um, travel this summer. So um, I'm glad to know that exists, that it works. But, but I think the reason you probably don't use it so much is one of the advantages that I found in the uh, Colorado Trail Explorer is that all the trails you're seeing on this map are really trails not just images on a map that are smart enough that when you do pick them you can essentially pick them at the start and the end and it will find the route along that trail because it it's known about it in the um, programming versus right. some of the other uh, like guy and stuff it's really just an image on a map and it does not have the smarts to pick up that trail right yeah yeah that's a great point that's, and a great that, point. that's a huge time saver for planning trips because the, the the putting a zillion little points along a trail when it's just an image is a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. um. And then let's see. Another good question was in regards to if someone shares a trip with you, can you duplicate it and therefore change it to modify your own way? Um. I don't believe so. I think the best you can do with uh, currently, uh, although that's a that's an interesting idea that we should consider for the future. Uh, but currently, the best you can do is to like that um, that trip, like you would do with the CMC trip, and then you have access to it. Um, but there isn't um, a button for duplicating that particular trip and then being able to modify it. But that's not a bad idea. That's something that we should consider. Um, for the future here. Okay. Um, other than that, I think you've pretty well kept up with most of the questions. Okay. So I think if you want to go on to the next topic. Yeah. So just kind of reading a question as I'm looking over my notes to make sure I don't forget anything here for everyone. Oh, I'll touch touch a little bit on recording a trip. I don't really have, I'm not out in the mountains, so I won't really be able to record a trip for you, but um, I'll give you uh, an idea of what you can do with this when you're out in the field. So I'm out in the field and I wanna record. Um, I'm just gonna hit this plus icon here in the bottom right. And I'm gonna choose to record a trip. 
I've got a couple of different options. I can take a field note. If I take a picture of like a, I did this last summer, I took pictures of really cool campgrounds that weren't really listed anywhere and said, put a note in to come back to that area next summer in the fall, because it was a really beautiful spot. Um, so this is why I was getting, by the way, for the person that asked about that orange symbol, this is why I was getting that orange caution symbol. Um, I don't have high accuracy mode on my GPS. And so it's it's letting me know that that's the case. I actually don't even have my GPS on right now. So um, hiking uh, is the activity type that I'd like to do. Um, and I can choose some of these other things before I start the trip, the um, visibility tagged users. Someone asked about the visibility, again, the difference between private and unlisted. Private is just me. Private is only mine. Unlisted is if I give someone else the link or I tap the share button in Kotrex and I text it to them or email it to them, they can click on that link and open it up, but that's it. Only people with the link can look at that trip that I've created. Uh, so private, only me, unlisted, only the people that I send the link to. Um, so I could put a title description. I'm just gonna start my trip and it's gonna start recording. And I have this blue little icon here that indicates my position on the map. So you can use this. You don't have to have this. Um, you don't have to be recording to use this icon. You can get a GPS fix while you're outside of cell service if you have the map block downloaded and use Kotrex to navigate as I'm going along a, a trail. Um, but I have this GPS dot and my, my activity is being recorded right now. Uh, you can tell that because I've got the little hiking symbol and it's got that spinning icon there. Um, so it'll continue recording like this, you know, until I'm done. I just tap this again and finish recording. Um, but I can go along like this. You can also see a little uh, directional cone, a blue little cone that might be a little small on your screen. Let's see if I can make it bigger. You can see that little cone turning there from the west to the south. Um, so that's based off of the direction that I'm turning my phone. I'm rotating my phone and that cone is turning just like you find on uh, Google Maps. Um, and we, we launched that last year uh, and it's usually pretty effective. Um, every once in a while, the calibration gets off, um, which is true of Google Maps and every other um, GPS uh, tool like that that's out there. And so I found that I can solve uh, solve it if it's kind of off, if I'm pointing straight north and I know I'm straight north and it's kind of off to the side, um, either by closing Kotrex and opening it back up again, um, or, you know, and do the same thing that uh, Google Maps asks you to do when it's not calibrated properly, which is they do like a, a figure eight motion in the air that apparently helps the internal sensors figure out where they are. Um, but in general, it's pretty accurate. It can help you when you're at a junction or something like that. Um, so uh, that's basically recording. When I get done, I tap on that. I can look at trip stats, see how far I've gone, ascent, descent, how long, my average speed, things like that. Um, but I'm gonna finish this recording. And then it's gonna show me my path after the fact. And I can look at those stats again in here. And this is something that we're actually going to update um, sometime this year. Um, is a, a navigation mode for Kotrex that'll give you more tools um, and a better interface for when you're actually out on a trail to be able to see your GPS coordinates, your current elevation, um, other details about your trip, active stats and things like that about your trip in a little bit of a, a better format of a map scale so you can see what the scale is for the area as you're kind of navigating with it, as well as the ability to lock um, your position to the center of the screen and have the map move underneath so that you don't have to kind of adjust the screen because right now the map is fixed in Kotrex and if you travel your little dot will travel across your screen um, but we're going to build it um, you know we're going to release an update that will allow you to keep your map keep the dot centered uh, like you do on Google Maps when it's giving you directions it tells you you're going to take an exit in 200 feet we don't have the ability to you know tell you should take an exit in 200 feet, but we will have the ability to at least lock that in the center so it's easier to navigate with uh, that way. So that's just a sneak peek at that. Um, but that's essentially how I hike, I can, or how I record. I can share this as well. I can download the GPX and upload it into some other application. And this is also gonna sync to desktop, so I'll be able to go and look at my trips on desktop um, via that.
uh, recording or, or look at that recording through that. Would you mind just showing real quickly again how you start the recording and stop the recording? Yeah, absolutely. So let me get back to the map here. So to start a recording, plus button, bottom right hand corner pulls up a bunch of options. I can t take a field note, takes a picture in a GPS pin of the current location. I can record a trip. I can create a custom route. This is how you create a custom route on mobile if you're using your phone and you want to do the same thing we did on desktop with measuring the route. Um, I can do a trip report and report on the conditions of that trail. And I can also submit map feedback. This is important as well for us. We take reports from members of the public that say, hey, this says I can't mountain bike, but the trailhead sign says I can. Uh, and we take that directly to the agency in charge and ver validate that information and update um, Cotrex pretty quickly. Usually within a couple of days, we can do that. Um, so I'm going to tap record a trip in this case. Choose my activity type. I'm choosing hiking and then hit start trip. And that'll start, start me recording here. And now I'm recording. Tap that again and finish it. That's about it. So I know we're right at time here. Um, and I want to make sure that um, we can answer questions. I'm happy to stay around for a couple extra minutes here and uh, answer questions for folks um, on anything that I can. You all ask some good questions, so you might stump me. On a yeah, few. so I think we have um, another couple questions in regards to using the routes that you've planned in the field or a previous recording and using the app to guide you along that route or your previous recorded one using guidance. Mm. Show that. Yeah. So we don't, there are some routes in Cotrex that you can do a route guidance feature on. There's a feature in Cotrex that lets you do route guidance um, that will um, do a little bit of that, but it's not really sophisticated um, and I wouldn't rely on it too much. You are able to um, pull up a custom route and keep that custom route pulled up as you, um, you know, hike across an area or bike across an area. Um, one of the things that, that we need to address in a future update is that if I begin to, that currently if I begin to record a trip, if I have a custom route pulled up, for example, if I have this trip pulled up here that I have on the screen, and I pull that up on my mobile device, and then I go to record a trip, it will remove this line from the map to start recording so that it can start creating a line of my recording of where I've been. Um, and that's something that I think that we need to update in the future so that you can do kind of what you're talking about. You can say, okay, this is the customer, this is where I wanna go, and I also wanna record a trip and keep track of my progress along the route that I you know, plan to take over the weekend. Um, and so that's something that we're looking into um, updating uh, here in the future so that works a little bit uh, more intuitively and is a little bit easier to use. But you can always go back and look at your um, uh, recorded trips, download GPX files, um, manipulate them in that way, edit them and, and update them. Um, and we're also um, going to come out with a, with a feature here sometime this year uh, where you can trim your uh, trip recording. So in the event that you you know, record your trip for, you know, you're out for a hike for two, three hours, you get in the car and you forget to stop recording, you drive all the way home, you'd be able to kind of trim off the end of that uh, back to the trailhead when you got there so that you don't record all that, you know, driving home or that kind of stuff. So we're working on a few of those things, but you can't right now have a custom route up and record a trip and still kind of navigate along that custom route, unfortunately. Okay. You can, I will say though, that you can start a recording um, and then if you get to a trail junction, for example, and you don't remember where to go, you can still pull up that custom route and you will continue recording in the background. Um, you'll just have issues in switching between I'm looking at a custom route and then I'm recording that kind of that interaction. If that okay, happens. one other good question. Um, previously, you showed doing your route planning on the desktop, um, but can you also do that in the field with your mobile? Yep, absolutely. All the tools that are available on desktop are also available on mobile. I do all my planning on desktop personally because it's a heck of a lot easier. 
uh, to draw lines on a map with a mouse than it is by tapping, but you can absolutely uh, do that same thing on mobile. So there's no, um, yeah, no fo functions that you can't uh, do that with, or that there are no functions that you don't have on on Kotrek or on mobile that you have on desktop. You just need better eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. Uh, I think that got most of the questions. Um, can you download a GPX to Kotrex? Yeah, you can import. So I'm just showing import, that on. Yes, import. So here's an example. Here's that same measure tool. And I'm just tapping with my finger here and going along. And I get the same kind of stuff, 2.1 miles. Tap on that and get an elevation profile. All the same kind of stuff. Um, that I could do on desktop, I can do that on mobile as well. I just find it's a lot easier to do that part, at least on desktop. And another question on that is, if you have saved the map block and you're offline, can you do that route planning even offline? Yes, you can as of this summer. So as of this summer, this last summer, um, we released an update where uh, if you have the map block downloaded and you are outside of cell service, you can use this measure tool and you can get accurate um, uh, accurate measurements as you're tapping along. Um, it'll give you those the accurate measurement that you're seeing when you have cell service. Okay, excellent. Yep. And then uh, back to the um, importing and exporting GPX. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can uh, import uh, GPX files. I believe what we cover right now are recorded trips. Let me check. Yeah, I can import a GPX file to my recorded trip. So if I've recorded my trips in another application like Strava or Gaia or All Trails, um, I can download those and import them as GPX files into Kotrex and see them as recorded trips in here. Uh, we don't currently support the ability to import a custom route. Um, but we ought to, and it'll, um, you know, probably be coming coming in the future. We're continuously developing Kotrex. One of the nice things about it, especially, you know, again, getting back to, I, I feel like a, a, a little cruel and being so mean to government applications. I just haven't had a good experience with them besides Kotrex. But one of the really nice things about Kotrex is that we are continuously updating it. And we take a lot of feedback and features from the public um, and we turn them into into features. So, you know, this import GPX was specifically from someone um, emailing us and saying, hey, you know, I want to be able to import all my GPX trips and look at them on Kotrex, all my trips into Kotrex and be able to look at those recordings. And so we built this feature because um, we thought that'd be valuable. And so, you know, if you see something that you'd like to see in Kotrex, we can't promise that we're going to build everything because we're a very, very small team. Um, but we look at every single email that we get to our email address. Uh, which is kotrex at state.co.us. Um, we share that email address. We look at every single email, um, and we um, consider pretty much any idea that people have uh, coming through uh, for, a, for a future update. That's excellent. And I will add on to that. You have been very responsive to our needs for like the backpacking planning that we did and made some changes to the program in really pretty fast time compared to some other software changes that never seem to ever happen. Yeah. Oh, yes, uh, you've been very good at updating the program and also the support line. Uh, we'll let everybody else know that it's been very useful and very quick to respond and, and very good responses. So I think everybody will find that to be very nice. Um, I think that covers both uh, most of our questions that I've seen. I think we've pretty well run out of time also. So, um, Joe, I'd like to say thank you very much for, for doing the presentation uh, last week and then again tonight. Um, you guys have been super helpful. And uh, what we'd like to do from the CMC is provide you and Alex a complimentary membership to the club for a year so you can come out and hike and show us Kotrex live online. Oh, that's great. That's amazing. I'm sure Alex will be thrilled. I'm definitely going to come out and join you all on a trip for sure. Excellent. That'd be so great. Much. So we're, we'll get those to you in the next couple of days, but uh, really do appreciate your help on this. And I think uh, 
there'll be a lot of interest in it throughout the club and we'll use it a lot this summer on our backpacking trips I know and hopefully it'll spread throughout the club for a lot of the other functions so awesome well that's great well thank you all again for having me and taking the time to to listen and I do um someone asked a really great question is there an online how-to manual Vicky asked that's a great question and, a, and probably a good place to end it. Um, there is, if you go on the desktop at the very bottom, there's a terms privacy legend. It's in tiny, tiny text way down here in the bottom. And then there's help. And you can click on that and that'll take you to our support portal. We launched this last year as well. Um, this is a support portal that has um, FAQs and announcements. You know, these are product updates that we did. Uh, and you can search through this and look for articles on things. So, you know, how, uh, recording a trip, for example, recording a trip, editing a recorded trip. Uh, and we update this uh, pretty regularly and, and add to it. So um, it's a growing library. It's, it's definitely in that growing status where you may find some gaps in it. If you do, again, send us an email, uh, reach out to us, and we'll be happy to, to fill in those gaps. Uh, so, again, thank you all so much uh, for for listening and and thanks for having me on randy and yeah i look forward to seeing you all out there on the trail okay thanks again joe we really do appreciate it and we will look forward to hiking with you all right talk okay. to you later bye